a look at decades of doctors. Over the past 10 years, the lure of the Leatherbridge surgery has proved impossible to resist for countless celebrity guests. Who else is gonna find me? As you were about to see, with the big names came the big performances. For their thousandth episode, doctors turned to the talents of one of the nation's best love actors. I was asked to do this uh, very nice part of a, a mad old man, which is what I play these days. <laughs> and uh, my wife was uh, typecasting. It's not me. It's them. Sorry? It was very simply and well written. And this was just a poor old lowly man in an in a old people's home. The place is haunted. It's riddled with them. When you're working with someone like Richard, you almost take a back seat because he's been doing it a long time so you just sit back and you watch and you look and you learn i'll get that fixed too well the telly's still switching itself over doctors is quite a blessing particularly for younger actors or poor old actors <laughs> so it, it does a, a great service to the training of young people i think doctors is one of the biggest employers of actors in the uk taking on almost 900 performers every year. In 2004, that included landing a living legend. Eric Sykes has created some of TV's defining moments during a career spanning more than 50 years. In a way, I'm in a very fortunate position of having nothing left to prove. And uh, like a good old piece of cheese, I'm lasting. I saw him as I was going back to my dressing room and he was walking with his assistant to his dressing room and I remember standing there going... It was the, the brilliance of the writing. I mean, it was such a good plot. This is Harold Burt and this is my video diary. Eric played a dying patient who leaves a video message for his doctor. I haven't said a lot of things I should have said. And I have said a lot of things I shouldn't have said. And apparently they were all <laughs> a bit weepy uh, at seeing it. An actual fact, I had a lump in my throat. To Doc McGuire, a man I consider one of the best, a real man, a gent, and a hero. I'm looking for a young, fit, healthy, good-looking millionaire. Hello. Hello, I'm David. I was with one, one woman and I ran off with another, so it was, uh, it was pretty Darren Day, really. But alongside Darren and regular Jacqueline Leonard, producers needed a third corner to complete their love triangle. What the hell are you doing here? The idea of Stephanie Powers, Hollywood legend, uh, being the mother of uh, a Lethbridge GP seemed a little crazy at the time. Now back in the States, we caught up with Stephanie on the phone for a heart-to-heart -heart on her doctor's experience. Under the circumstances of producing something every single day, I think they shoot it in a much uh, better way than almost anything that's on television. And that I wanted to work with. And I wanted to understand what the technique was. She really got into the doctor's spirit. In fact, I've got very fond memories of her queuing at, at a local pub, Carvery, to collect her lunch along with the rest of the cast and crew. I think she only went once. We all went back. From the stars to secrets behind the scenes, join me tomorrow and I'll show you the doctors as you've never seen them before. sneak peek behind the drama of Doctors. Over the last 10 years, you have seen all the Doctors action on screen. But how about those amazing stories that happen behind the camera? You are about to see your favorite GPs as you've never seen them before. Over the years, life in Leatherbridge has seen some steamy scenes. Turning on the passion for the cameras wasn't a problem for former cast members Corin Wicks and Tom Butcher. By the time our characters got together and did our first bed scene, as it were, we'd already been rehearsing 
off camera. What? What? We've been getting on quite well recently. Well, I thought so. If we're agreed on that, how about telling people? Going public. As doctors Helen Thompson and Mark Elliott, Corin and Tom were an on-screen item. And off-screen, they fell in love for real. After about two or three years, he asked me to marry him. <laughs> I did, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've never done that before to anybody. So, uh, you were the first. Oh. <laughs> he whisked me off my feet, quite literally. <laughs> I think our last scene was outside of the surgery, in the snow. A nice memory, actually, because it was fun to film. And I really... nearly did me back in. Yeah. I'm not heavy. <laughs> Cheeky. <laughs> Life hasn't just imitated art for Tom and Corin. Before appearing in Doctors, Michael McKell had a successful career as a pop star. At that time, I was a musician, was signed to EMI. I'd been working uh, with Ty Wilcox, Boy George, and then in August 91, I had a big car smash and couldn't walk without leg braces for two years. Going from the front of a teenage magazine to going to a headline, not being able to walk. It was the reinvention of me and becoming an actor. Michael landed the part of Nick West in Doctors, but one day his past came back to haunt him. The producers came to me and said, look, we've got this idea to smash Nick up, put him in a car crash, so he has to completely rebuild. Come on, Nick. There were lots of echoes of what had happened to me. Sure you'd call. Ever wished you could be one of the doctor's patients and get a bit of personal attention from Dr. Jimmy? I'll be there as quickly as I can. You just make yourself comfortable. Thank you, Doctor. Well, one confused member of the public clearly did when filming moved to the Mill Health Center. We had someone not that long ago who um, saw the surgery, wandered in, tried to sign up with the surgery, and was completely oblivious to the lights and the camera crew and all the actors in costume standing around her. Um, and wouldn't take no for an answer. Could, couldn't understand that it wasn't a real surgery, it was a set and we were trying to make a drama, but they didn't quite get that. Have you ever wondered how the cast of Doctors see themselves? One person who certainly got a fresh take on them is veteran lighting electrician Herbie. My job is uh, such that the, the peaks of activity are at the start and the end of the scenes, and we're in attendance during, so I get time to sort of monitor and watch. Herbie's caricatures are often plastered backstage for all to see, but he's got plenty hidden away in his sketchbook, and few of us have escaped his satirical scalpel. I, I'm quite happy he's done me nice and slim. I approve of that. I've got a nice jawline. I don't think my jawline is quite as sharp as that. <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry, I, I just don't get it. Uh, I mean, it's quite nicely drawn and all that. It's a shame there's no colour. Join me again tomorrow when I'll show you some of the TV tricks that go into making an episode of Doctors and give you a sneak peek into what's coming up. <laughs>